So I'm going to show you how this is actually not even a new phenomenon. It's been going on for decades already. Okay? We're going to go back in time, the black and white era. This is actually pre-Israel. This is during the British Mandate of Palestine. Between uh, World War I until just after World War II, the British were the colonial power in the land. And at any time, at any given time in the 1930s or 40s, you had about 130,000 British soldiers in Palestine, give or take. So, while the British are in the country and they're doing their maneuvers and they're standing at attention and they're, you know, aiming their rifles and they're occasionally taking breaks and sometimes when they're off duty they go into cafes or they go into bars or they go to dance clubs or they go to the beach, right? And on some of these occasions when they're out in public, off duty, what could be more natural in the world? You're walking along the beach and you see an attractive woman and you say hi and you start to flirt and some of these would turn into relationships in and of themselves. And so this woman actually is the uh, sister of the former president of Israel. This happened to her too. She was, you know, you know, she met a man who was a British officer and they fell in love and decided to spend their lives together. And this happened, but whenever, they, or almost every single time, these people eventually left the country because they were under so much social pressure. Uh, they were essentially excommunicated by the community. It wasn't everyone, but it was a large group and it, it, they, there wasn't any pushback really. So um, most of these couples, these mixed, so-called mixed race couples, ended up you know, going and raising their families in other parts of the world. However, while this is happening, the Jewish settlement enterprise in Palestine is actually operating clubs and training uh, a whole squad of women to actually be geisha girls of a sort. You have these women who it's their job to take these British soldiers out on their days off to show them around the country, to take them on trips so they could see the sites, so they could become impressed with the Jewish settlement enterprise. Again, the idea to flirt with them in their subtle way and use their, um, their femininity to convince these British soldiers, non-Jewish British soldiers, to embrace political Zionism. Okay? And while this is happening, again, it's the same six script where on one hand you have this promotion of the idea of the sexual availability of Jewish Israeli women to entice people to support Zionism, and at the same time, turning those women who actually have relationships with non-Jews into like public enemy number one. So the rabbinate at that time, the chief rabbis of that time in Mandate Palestine, they got together and they put together a committee, a committee to protect the honor of the Jewish woman or something like this, and it, these groups would go out, and again, the same thing, it's just like the lahava of, yesteryear, of yesteryear, rather. They would harass and harangue these women and threaten them, and they would beat them, and sometimes they would murder them. Okay, you had these groups, these splinter groups, they called themselves the sons of Phineas, they would go out and they would beat and they would sometimes murder these women and nothing ever came of it. These people who did this were never brought to trial. And that, that's for people who had relationships with British soldiers. If a Jewish woman was suspected of dating an Arab man, they would actually capture her, kidnap her, turn her upside down and pour hot peppers into her vagina. <laughs> 